Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more Brood War casts. Uh, we have for you here today a uh, continuation in this series of some of the Legends ladder games, and this time we've got two of them. This is going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, of course, I've been doing a few Flash replays lately. Here is Flash over on the bottom left of Sylphid, and up here at 12 o'clock, where we started, <clears throat> none other than Stork. Uh, this is this is a gem of a replay. I haven't seen it. I have no idea what happens or who wins, but just the fact that I'm in possession of a Flash versus Stork replay kind of makes me a little bit giddy, okay? Uh, for those of you who were not really into the scene back in around 2007 through 2008, that type of era, uh, that was kind of peak Brood War, right? Like, before StarCraft II came out, we got this insane, like, uh, era of, yeah, 2008, 2009, um, where everyone was playing Brood War full-time. Uh, it was hyper, hyper competitive. And the best four players in the world were Flash, Jadong, Bisu, and Stork. So to have, from the prime of Brood War, Two of the top four players going at it is always going to be a treat. Of course, this replay, very, very recent here from the summer of 2023. And I am looking forward to seeing how this is going to go down. Like, Stork, you know, <clears throat> he is someone who still makes it into ASL. Flash, of course, you know, it, it, considered before he went to the military, the greatest player of all time. God, much better than everyone else. Uh, but, of course, we're kind of looking at these replays to see what type of shape he's in. He has not returned officially to professional play. He hasn't been streaming. But luckily, we do have a few of his games to look at. Uh, so, anyways, it does look like Flash is going to be going here uh, for a gasless expansion. And Stork, is he going to make a Zella? It looks like the answer to that is no. So, that's going to be very solid for Flash. You know, if you're making... Uh, a Zealot that can screw up this type of build order quite a bit. It looks like this is actually poorly... Well, unless he makes a second depot there, then it's well placed. Uh, but you can put it next to the command center and make a little micro hole for those Marines. But it looks like he wants the depot here. Uh, and Marines can go through there. And this is Zealot type right there, right? So the Marines can be on this side and harass. And of course, he'll end up putting a bunker probably right there. Of course, you need your gas first. And that's what he's going to go ahead and do. Stork, in the meantime, has not yet scouted Flash. Now, one funny thing about Stork is this is his most hated build order. Okay? He hates to play against Gasless Expansion from Terran. He thinks it is unbelievably strong. Well, Stork is actually known as being the biggest uh, balance whiner in the Korean StarCraft community. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it's kind of like a funny thing about him, but he talks about how this build is unbelievable to play against. Uh, and of course, Flash has done the greediest version of it here as well. So Flash looking very good. He's already got a bunker up before any Dragoon can get there. The Dragoon going across the map, of course. Stork is getting quick range, so this will probably force a quick siege mode out of Flash, who is right now setting up these SCVs. Of course, you keep this wall down for a little bit just to make sure they don't try to run by and get in your main base or something, right? This is a catch-all. You can't get through here with units no matter what. The SCVs can simply block and repair the bunker. Right now, Flash hiding an SCV. He wants a secondary scout later on. And Stork with one Dragoon only. Oh, two Dragoons. Okay, I was going to say, is that a probe? Is he going to take a third base super fast? No, it does not look like that right now. Uh, instead, going to go for a very fast robotics. Maybe going to go into Reaver. Very, very popular to do against these gasless expansions. The Dragoon continuing to scout, but was on a move command there. Doesn't get a shot off on this SCV, who is going to be able to go up and actually see the Robo. That's pretty big. That is a pretty big find right there. Uh, as soon as you see this Robo, it's like you know the timings of everything. You know when a Reaver can come. You know there's no Dark Templars, that type of thing, right? So you don't need any extra detection. He did already start his Engineering Bay, and he will need it anyway, so he's just going to leave that. Uh, the bunker is being pelted now by those ranged Dragoons. Flash going to go ahead and repair. Uh, he is making some more Marines for it as well. That'll dissuade the Dragoons from jumping forward to try to snipe the Siege Tank. Uh, and he might, like, land this up there, for instance, to create a little bit more of a wall. 
No, it looks like he just wants to make it there so his tank can fit into this area. That's right here is very likely where he'll put his tank. Because uh, you want to range the Dragoons, but you want to have it as far back as possible so that if they do try to dive on it, the bunker is getting maximal hits. So two add-ons are done. And Flash is foregoing Siege Mode. So he actually is going to try to go for a pressure build here. And, uh, you know, there is a fourth Dragoon coming, which makes it slightly dangerous uh, because four Dragoons do two-shot a tank. So that can be an issue. So he's going to bring this first tank up. Stork won't dive with three goons, but when he gets his fourth goon there, he might. Uh, now, Flash, yeah, he's poking, he's prodding. Notice Stork is guarding this, this Dragoon that's already hurt. So there's the four Dragoons. He tries to dive, but Flash is very, very fast and pulls back. You gotta be careful. Again, it's two volleys from four dragoons to uh, kill a tank. So there's there's a big volley right there. And you can see he's just three hits from death right now in that siege tank. Second and third tanks come out. <laughs> Excuse me. And yeah, this should be enough now to push him back. Will Stork jump again? I don't think so. I think he's taking enough damage on these goons. He wants to be careful about that. He gets a little bit of damage on it, but all this is repairable for Terran. So this was actually a very good, very solid hold from Flash. Stork going to pull back. By the way, Stork about to have a Reaver going into 3-8 and has that third Nexus. So this is actually like an extremely standard game that you can look at and actually learn a lot from on both sides. Stork has opened really, really nicely. You know, he tried to get the tanks. It didn't work. Flash now moving out immediately with this push. He knows that a Reaver is very likely on the way. And in fact, there it goes. And since they're passing each other, Flash's army can kill all the Dragoons that are left over for Stork. But Stork has potential in his harassment with this Reaver. So he's going to fly in, and the missile turret's not quite done. Oh my god, the favorite time of Protoss players, right as the turret's finishing. You get in there, you end that turret immediately, and actually kind of glitches that a little. No, he does get the hit off, kills off that making turret. And now Flash has to attack. Flash has to get something done with this. He does not have Siege Mode yet. He's going to dive super hard up here. Like, he just, he wants to eliminate these Dragoons and start getting probes because he knows he is going to lose a lot. Look at this, 13 kills on the Reaver right now. Flash, though, going after these probes. Huge amounts of damage everywhere. Stork dealing a, just ridiculous damage with that Reaver. But Flash has killed a lot of probes over here as well. They've actually killed almost the same amount of workers at this point. Kind of insane to see. Very decisive plays from both sides. You can see why they're both champions here with this type of play. Looks like the Reaver's almost cleaned up. And as four more Dragoons pop up, he will be able to clean up these tanks. So the tanks, if they run home now, that's the absolute best play, I think. Uh, it's it's pretty clear because, yeah, six Dragoons will just slaughter these. In fact, four Dragoons would do that. Two, two would actually maybe kill him if there's no mines around. Uh, but yeah, now we're in this funny position where Stork does have three Nexuses, uh, right? So he is going to be able to re uh, reproduce his probes very quickly. Flash doesn't have great anti-air. He's making a couple Goliaths, and his tanks are coming home. So this very red Reaver, I don't know that Stork can do more. Like, he's looking for more right now, but it will die to one shot until its shields are back up. And as the Goliaths come up, I think he's just got to turn around and he's got to run out of here. Two Speed Vultures going out on the map, seeing if they can get some damage. I mean, this is a little bit open, but has three Dragoons, three Dragoons here as well. It really looks like Stork is sewn up pretty tight. I don't think you're going to really get much more here. Yeah, Flash runs out. Maybe he could have sniped one probe there on his way out, but, you know, that's fine. Uh, has to jump back and do his macro cycles as well. So, okay, who's who's ahead? Who's ahead here? It's, yeah, I would say Stork for sure, right? Like, again, he's got the three Nexus against two Command Center. He's got the more mobile harassment uh, with the Reavers, right? So he's getting shuttle speed right now, which is going to do a lot for him. He is getting a Forge to get some upgrades and maybe some defensive cannons going. And he's got four gateways. So he's basically producing nonstop three uh, Nexus probes and five production facilities. Meanwhile, Flash is on just two in two command centers. So it's going to take him a lot longer uh, to, you can see, right? Like they were very even in workers and now Stork is up seven, you know, a couple minutes later. That's just, that's the difference of having that extra production facility. So Stork's going to hit the number he wants very quickly. And as far as Flash goes, like in these positions, if I zoom way out and show you, 
right? Your third base has to be here or here. In these positions, because Protoss is so close, you want to take it here. And this is reduced resources. So he is going to expand here. You can see him already getting into position for that. But because it's reduced resources, it just pushes the game longer and longer. Because once you take this base, you're going to have to take that base. There's not much... There's not much of a choice there because unless you have like a timing that comes immediately, you know, you're going to run out of resources here quickly. So you need to take an additional base. So here we are at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Flash with only three factories. It's been a crazy game. So like we can't just take normal benchmarks and judge too harshly of them. But certainly you see that Stork right now up 30 supply, 10 of which is in workers and up that mining base. Uh, must be feeling good. He is poking and prodding the sides. He can't get in here, but he does have double speed shuttle. So there is some big potential for damage in that main base. Stork going to go ahead, fly in here, drop off his zots. Good leading with that shuttle. And the double reaver comes out. Look, 16 kills on that thing already. Going to kill a lot more. Uh-oh, the siege tanks going to end up going down there. One of them gets picked off immediately. He did take some pretty big damage on both of the reavers. So they're low. They're very low right now. The vultures can actually end up helping to kill these. So Flash gets it. He gets he gets both the reavers. The shuttle is going to get out very, very low. But right now, Stork is up 13 workers. We're still on three factories for Flash. Like, honestly, Flash has to turtle so hard here. Stork has already gone up to six gateways. Tem look at that. Templar Archives, he's going to get into Psy Storm. And, like, there's no attack potential here for Flash. This is a tough, rough game. You know, I, this is funny that uh, I, I'm trying to cast some of these Flash games. A lot of people have been asking about them. But, I mean, I haven't I haven't watched these. I'm not choosing any games that, that I've already previously seen. Uh, and here he is, and it looks like Stork is going to be able to kill him. Like, Stork is, is really far ahead right now. Look at this. He's taking that additional base for his fourth. Uh, honestly, he can take a fifth base right now as well and be like completely clean on it i'm a little bit surprised he's not i think he might not be reading this situation properly but just with the size of his army against three factories you just can't really you can't really attack right uh normally at 12 minutes you're already going to have seven factories done and pumping for quite a while so that's that's a bit of an issue and stork right now up like 40 supply what can go wrong for this guy well, it is Flash. That's what can go wrong. Yes, good answer. Uh, <laughs> Flash, you know, being the greatest ever, uh, he knows in every situation, like, what he needs to do, what what the what the situations are, what the things can occur that can allow him to win the game. I'm surprised he doesn't actually unsiege there. He might not realize, like, if there's an army right here ready to go and you unsiege, sometimes that can really cost you. So sometimes it is better to just lose a tank and push the shuttle away. Uh, but yeah, he's going to stay sieged stay turtled up right now he is going into more factories and this is tough because we're gonna start seeing these minerals get lower and lower and lower and it's like okay well you're gonna be forced to expand into other bases now one thing to say about this map about neo sylphid is uh we can get into these games where basically here i'm gonna zoom out once again right it's a three-player map if Terran can hold this area right this this specific area they get themselves five bases, right? One, two, three, four, five. And they deny this base. So that leaves Protoss with these three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine possible bases. But you can deny this one quickly. Sometimes you can deny this one. And if you're holding this area, all you have to do is push into this area, right? So if I zoom out again, if you're holding this area, if you can push as far as this, this is the most wide open area, you choke off the map. And sometimes Terran can start to dominate this map in the late game if they can do that so that might be the comeback that we're looking for from flash now flash has the scv county wants it's 64 to 78 probes stork is super high in his economy flies in now with another couple speed shuttles he's going to get one high templar out there and throws a storm down mostly on vultures the scvs ran super super fast and yeah there's not there's not a templar in here that's a zealot so not very impactful uh, that, that set of drops not really working, but Stork is instantly remaxed. Flash now at 140. 140 is the number where if you're set up correctly, you can hold on against maxed out Protoss attacks, especially when they're this high in probes. So 
I feel like Flash has gotten himself out of the woods there. You know, I was nervous for him for a little bit, but he stayed turtled. The, again, the problem is these mineral patches are getting low, right? In fact, these two bases are slated to run out at about the same time. That That's that's the problem, right? Third is supposed to outlast the natural, but it generally doesn't happen on this map if you take this base. So what does Flash do? Does Flash push in this direction to take these bases? Does he push in this direction to deny bases and maybe try to expand behind it? I don't think so. That's like so hard to hold, but we'll see. Now some vultures trying to run by, trying to make something happen. Stork right now with a giant wall here. Tons of cannons going down. He's trying to reach, he's trying to take this bottom right main, a very important base. If Protoss doesn't take this base, they will not win on this map. Like they absolutely need the other main. Also, he's taking this base really, really quickly. I don't mind it. I like the saturation. He has pretty heavy saturation there as well. Because this is a base that in the late game, Terran can shut down pretty easily. If they take that middle area, they can siege up and, and get rid of it, right? So I like that he's trying to get the minerals out of there right now. Now, Stork with a huge army running around. Four High Templars in there, two in there. So six High Templars plus his big gateway army, plus two attack on there. Two, one here for Flash as far as upgrades go. And here comes that fourth command center. He's moving up here to just remove anything in his way. Look at this very defensive positioning he's taking. Now, here's the thing. This defensive spot, it's like, okay, this is pretty strong. But if Stork takes his entire army and shoves it into here, he will knock this out, right? So Sp Flash is split into two pieces. This defense and this defense. Now he's bringing more up here as he sees those dragoons approach. He's, Stork is going to want to run back. I'm surprised he's running around with a full group. It's actually, I, I heard this once that you're supposed to actually walk around with like, I believe it's 10 dragoons or it might be nine. When you get 12, they bump into each other too much. There are things like this that exist in Brood War where it's like, yeah, you don't want the full group. It's much more mobile with a smaller group. That's actually the same thing with vultures. If you want to lay mines quickly, 12 vultures isn't good. Something like six to eight can lay their mines without bumping into each other. Whereas you have 12, they just all glitch out on each other. Very oftentimes for both sides. Of course, there are exceptions. Now, here he goes. He is going to shove his whole army into here. This is such a great setup. Look at this. Sets up a defense matrix in the front as well. Here comes some high Templars. Going to be dropped out. Oh, doesn't quite get the storm there. The mine gets him in time. Another storm drop goes out. Drops some on top of these siege tanks. And Flash with a ridiculous hold. Okay, he just ate a maxed Protoss army with like half of his army in that position. Unbelievable. I have chills. I can't... Like, what in the hell was that? Stork didn't get many storms off. He got one to two storms off when he had six High Templars. So... He was looking for 12 storms. He got like two. Now Flash instantly attacking across the map, really knowing his, his potential to win here. He killed so many of Stork's units. And now Stork, he's trying to remake his Dragoons, but he can't even get out of his natural. Flash has hit this perfect timing attack, this perfect counterattack. My God, seriously, Stork was so far ahead. The fact that Flash holds one attack and then he's like, yes, and now I kill you. It's amazing. He's unseaged basically everything from all of his defenses, going up, trying to get a kill on a Stork. Now, look at this. He's infiltrating the main base almost instantaneously, utilizes that defense matrix, has some great vision of what's going on in here. His tanks on the edge, killing so, so much. Stork is trying to break out, and he does have more supply still, but where is that supply? Well, it looks like a lot of it is down here. He's remade his gateways, so maybe he can play some sort of, like, refugee style where you're trying to expand around the map to different spots as you lose your main bases. I don't know, but it looks like Flash with this. Like, he's moved some tanks off to the side. He's killed this Nexus. What a, a ridiculous show of strength here from Flash. From getting so far behind against those Reaver drops. Like, he made some very decisive plays, some very decisive defenses. Like, honestly, I was questioning the setup here. I thought, like, maybe he should bring his whole army and set up here and try to block everything. But no, he baited Stork in almost. You know, I even said, you know, commentating this, looking at it, like, oh, if Stork shoves his whole army through, he'll break it. Right? And that's why I was nervous about him being split. But Flash, Flash knew what he had. He knew what he had to do. He knew the win condition. And, like, I think Flash is going to win now. The game isn't quite over, but he's coming out on the map. 
with these units like he's killing off a lot of this army now he might actually be able to break this this is basically pure siege tank and in fact flash attacking to the south now like if stork can win one of these battles there's still comeback potential okay get some decent storms off the zealots getting on top of a lot of these tanks it seems like flash should just be able to hold this off does lose quite a few of his tanks uh, so that does get a little bit sloppy, but this attack down here is doing very, very well. Getting into position to take out this natural. Oh, man. Looks like he's going to kill off this base as well, which actually was... The probes were evacuated. I think they were just sent over here when that finished. So not too many probes there. This is not as big a deal to lose that because he did run those probes away already. But he's going to be able to get this nexus as well. And what does Stork really have left? Okay, he's going to try and do a storm drop here. Not that many SCVs here, honestly. Pretty low. A lot of his SCVs there. A lot not mining here. I'm sure he would transfer these up to that base. But Flash, you know, getting that uh, additional mining location, incredibly important. you got to keep two bases mining. That's kind of the key of Terran. Once you get three, two upgrades, if you have two bases mining, you're, you're basically in good shape. Uh, now, DT coming out. This is a great type of move in this, in this type of kind of hectic game. Getting some DTs out there to be able to take out tanks. Looks like that one did succeed in killing those tanks off. Uh, more units still coming out of these gateways. Looks like he wants to make some DTs as well. Uh, but it looks like the rest of the main base will be picked off. Probably the only really important tech structure here is uh, the Templar Archives. Of course, he doesn't have a robo down here either. So that's a bit of an issue. Stork still has a decent economy, but his supply is getting very, very low at this point. And it does feel like Flash is going to have enough to just kind of grind through everything yeah the vultures coming out these small supply amounts like everything that he's making right now is super super weak uh to uh, two vultures and that's because the cybernetics core died and he hasn't remade it he is remaking it now to get some more dragoons but like zella archon high templar all of it dies to vultures without the dragoons there to kind of fend off vultures vultures just completely insane <laughs> right like he can kill everything with those now uh, yeah, Flash has a ton of units moving to the south. Again, really kind of an unbelievable game here. Stork had such a nice position. I'm sure he thought he was going to be able to win. I certainly did. But Flash, never count this guy out. Flash truly would have won. He's, uh, this guy, <laughs> you can see why he is the greatest ever. Uh, but yeah, he's pushing in. This is going to be the final push. This is really all that Stork has left. Yeah, he has this base, but there's no production. It's too small. And this is like Stork's final tries. He's trying to get together an army where maybe he can size storm this a bit, weaken it up, get the, the speed lots out there, and, and deal some damage to these tanks. Uh, but yeah, this should be it. This should be the final moments because there really is nothing left. Archon drop on the tank. Few more zealots coming out, but this army will easily delete those zealots also. Yeah, he has a little bit more harassment on the map, but it's again just those speed zealots. And well, we got some some real fantasy GG timing going on right now. This is uh Stork refusing to give up. Look at this, he makes a gateway while the tanks are attacking. Oh man, more zealots come out. He is gonna bomb as well. Okay, literally his supply is falling down to like his probe count and what's being made in gateways at the moment. So I think that's truly at this point got to be it. GG, Flash takes down Stork.